Welcome to my quick overview of Google Drive and shared folders. This presentation is an excerpt from my workshop, Google Drive Essentials. My name is Jeff Warner. I work at the Technology Training Center at the University of Alberta. What I want to do in this uh, short video is mostly talk about the pitfalls and um, places where things can really go haywire when it comes to shared folders. I like to say that shared folders in Google Drive are the coolest thing in Google Drive and the scariest thing in Google Drive all at the same time. And the reason for that is they're incredibly powerful and because they're an incredibly powerful tool, if people don't really know what they're doing and they're not set up right, uh, files can get lost, they can get reorganized, and this can be a major problem. You're on your way to a meeting and all of a sudden you can't find that really important file you've been working on for three days. Uh, people tend to get upset. So a really quick uh, review from my other video, which is an explanation of how folders really work in Google Drive. Uh, let's just remember that we've, if you've got various folders set up, it may seem like these are actual folders like you're used to working with on your computer or on a file server, but they're not really folders. They're actually labels like you have in your Gmail account. And so what I explained in my other video is that if you have a connection between your document and one folder, then it shows up in that folder list, but it's not actually located there. It's still just sitting in a giant bin called all items. If you drag this file to another folder, you're not really moving the file. You're just breaking a connection and forming a new connection with a new folder, which means that if you wanted to, you could have this file or document show up in more than one folder at the same time by simply adding a link. And uh, that gets done using the control key on your keyboard, or if you're on a Mac, it's the option key or a command key, depending on the menu. You can have a look at that video for uh, the full explanation of how this all works. Okay, so let's take a quick look at uh, how share folders actually work, and then I can talk about my recommendations for how I think you should use them. Yeah, I'll flip over here to one of my test accounts. So uh, what I want to show you is that uh, you can, in fact, share folders with people, just like you can share documents. I'm going to assume that you already know how to share a document. To share a uh, folder, I just locate that folder. There's a number of ways to do it. You can right-click on that folder. You can select it and choose the share button or my preferred method, find the little drop down button and go to share. So I'm going to share this folder called instructor docs and I'm going to share it with uh, two other test accounts, TTC03 and TTC04. I just put in their names or email addresses. And just like with documents, you can give the person edit access or view access. And also just like documents, the edit access is the default setting. Now, in my opinion, I do not recommend this as your de facto setting for sharing folders. And I'll share with you why that is when I show you some of the things that uh, I think can go wrong uh, versus the potential benefits you get from this. But just so we can see how this goes, uh, let's take a look at what you're going to get giving people edit access. The other reason why I think it's good to look at this is, sure, you might listen to me and not share these folders with people with edit access, but other people are going to share folders with you and give you edit access, and you should know what that means. Now, actually, before I do that, let's just pause for a moment. I'm going to cancel because I want to show you something. So I haven't shared this folder yet with anyone. And notice how <clears throat> inside my folder there are currently a bunch of documents and uh, this March 20th document and this B2 document have not been shared with anyone. This particular document has already been shared with someone and if I go into this particular document and take a look, I can see that it's been shared with a whole number of people, but none of those people are my TTC03 or TTC04 uh, colleagues. Now if I go into these subfolders, I will also see some documents, okay? And in fact, here's a document that I don't even own. This is a document from TTC03. And I, you know, as we talked about in our other, uh, in my other video where I talked about how folders work, of course, I can, of course, take other people's documents and put them into folders, put them into multiple folders. Okay, so that's sort of the setup. Now, uh, the reason why that's important is uh, I'll show you in a second. So I come in here, I'm gonna share this folder. I'll put in their names just like I would for a document. Click share and save. It'll send them an email. Uh, you know, all the things that we're used to it doing with documents. Okay, now we can wait for the email to come in or I can just skip right ahead. 
I'm going to switch over in a different browser I'm logged in as different users. So here over in Safari I'm logged in as TTC03 and that TTC03 in their shared with me files would now discover that oh look at that TTC instructor docs is a folder that's been shared with me. Now uh, this person could then uh, take this uh, folder and they could drag it to my drive if they wanted to. So now it's in there my drive as well. Maybe this is a folder that we're all going to work out of uh, communally and we want to all have access to the same folder and that's fine, that works. Here's a couple of things that are really important. The first thing I want you to note is that every single one of these subfolders and files is now shared. And the level of access that I have to the folder cascades down to every document and subfolder within that folder that's been shared with me. So whereas before I had zero access to these files, not only can I see these files because the folder is shared, but if I open up this document, before this document wasn't even shared with me, now I can actually edit this document. And some people aren't aware of this, so they don't realize that by giving someone edit access to the folder, you're also allowing that person to edit every single file that's ever going to be placed in that folder. Okay? So please be aware of that. Now, what does that mean? Okay, great. So I, I can edit the, edit the document, but it's not just editing documents. I can also rearrange. So what if I'm looking in here and going, oh, this sample doc, that belongs over here in samples. Okay. And come to think of it, uh, Jeff's doc B2, that's supposed to be in uh, partner docs. And this one, February 21st, that should be in test docs. Now, maybe you like that, right? Isn't that nice? Multiple people can organize the same folder. I mean, that's what we have in file servers. And I agree with you. It's just from my experience, I've seen this go sideways. And here's where the problem occurs, okay? I'm going to now flip over, and we're going to have a look at Google Chrome, which happens to be TTC04. So here we have yet another user. And this user also has access to the TTC Instructor Docs folder. And let's go in here and have a look. So they go in here first, they realize, hey, wait a minute, someone's been rearranging these folders. That's fine. They go and find the file that they're looking for. So there it is, Jeff's doc, February 21st. Right, that's an important document. We're all working on this. In fact, I'm going to put in a bunch of overtime right now and work on this. So I'm going to add some gurgly goop bullets. Uh, we'll pretend that that represents hours and hours of work that I worked on overnight preparing for my, you know, big meeting at the end of the week. Now, remember, this document, who does it belong to? It belongs to TTC02, right? But I have edit access to it because TTC02 placed it in a shared folder that I have, edit, I have edit access to the folder, therefore I have edit access to the document, okay? But when's, what ends up happening is I'm gonna switch back over again to TTC03, okay? And we're gonna go into that same file. There it is, Jeff's doc, February 21st. Now, here's what I, I've seen happen many times, okay? Someone's sitting here looking at test docs and they're thinking, you know what? Who put test docs inside instructor docs? That doesn't make any sense. Test docs should actually be a folder of, uh, let's say, um, the TTC03 docs. So they go in here, okay, and or the TTC03 folder here. So they go in here to instructor docs, they grab this subfolder, they click, hold, and drag, and they drag it over to here. Now they're allowed to move that folder. Why? Because they were given edit access to that folder. Okay. So it's still a shared folder. They were allowed to rearrange it. Now, when TTC02 goes back into there count, they go, hey, what the heck happened to my test docs? Now the problem is, is that TTC03 dragged that file, that folder into another folder of theirs that's not shared with the rest of us. So where the heck did that folder go? Now the good news is because I own that folder, I should be able to find it, but the only way I'm going to find it is if I do a search for it. Now hopefully I'm savvy enough, oops, sorry, wrong test, I should be testing for the, the, if I do a search for a test, you can see that I found test docs. Do you know where it's located now? It's just plain old located in all items. And I would have to then drag it back to somewhere to make sense to me. So essentially someone's completely mucked up how I was organizing things accidentally. That's not the most 
scary thing about this. The scary thing about this is the document that TTC04 was working on, okay, let's remember TTC04 only had access to that document because it was in a shared folder. Now, this other user, thinking they were just trying to be extra organized, they were moving some folders around, they weren't really paying attention to the fact that the folder that they dragged that to is a folder that isn't shared with TTC04. And so now all of a sudden, either in the middle of working on this file, okay, I get a message that says you no longer have permission to access it. I have now lost access to this document. Or usually even worse, I go logging back into my Google Drive. I go to find that. Okay, I go into instructor docs, and you know what? TTC, uh, sorry, test docs is gone, and I will not find that file. You can search for it as many as much as you want. I can do a search for Jeff, and we can search for that document. It is not there, and I've heard this time and time again. People are like, "Where did it go? Someone deleted it. It's gone." No, nobody deleted it. They just rearranged it, thinking they were being helpful, or they just were, weren't even thinking, and they just wanted to do their own organization without realizing that the only reason that that person had access to the document in the first place is because it was in a shared folder. And so this is where I get concerned about edit access to folders, okay? And the reason why I think people give edit access to folders to other people is as follows. Let's go back to the TTC02 account. Here's my assumption, and uh, you know, there's it's, a, it's an assumption, so <laughs> take it for what it's worth. My assumption is that First of all, it's the default setting. So I wonder how many people out there are sharing folders that it access, not because they're making that conscious choice, but simply because they're going, oh, so-and-so told me to share a folder with them. So I'm gonna go in here to project A. I need to share the project A folder. I'm not even focused on the level of sharing. I just start entering names. I hit save and I move on. But I'm not thinking about what are the effects of that, right? Number two. I can imagine that it is very tempting for people to think like this. Gee, we've got a project folder full of 182 documents and everyone on the team needs to have access to all 182 documents and anyone on the team is allowed to edit those documents. So what's going to be the easiest way for me to share those documents and give everyone edit access? Answer, share the, doc the folder with them, boom, problem solved, one step. Problem of course is what I just showed you. Sure, that's a, a quick and simple solution today, but somewhere down the road, there's gonna be some very upset people. Now, just to wrap this conversation up about what I don't recommend regarding shared access to folders, let me point, one, point out one other thing that I see causing a lot of problems in groups. What a lot of people say to me is they say in response to this, uh, okay, Jeff, uh, I get it. Uh, why don't we just tell people, don't go rearranging folders. Just use the folders that we give you. And um, as you'll see in my next video in this playlist, when I talk about recommended practices, I, I don't like that idea because I think when people are able to personalize their organization, they're more productive and more effective. Plus, let's be honest, that's not really accounting for human nature, which is that mistakes will happen. Let me, so, let me point out one of those other mistakes that will happen. Not only will people go into the folders to find their files, but anybody who's been using Google Drive for a while will notice that it's actually really easy to find files by just doing a search. So, gee, I'm trying to find that December doc. I type in DEC. Here's all my December documents. And what will often happen is you'll think to yourself, gee, you know what? A bunch of these December documents are ones that uh, I actually really need to review this month. So I'm gonna make it easier for myself. I'm gonna move these all into my needs review folder. Now, I either am not aware of or I forgot the fact that these are actually already located in other shared folders, like this one's in project A, this one's in this one called keywords. I'm not really paying attention to that. I'm just in a search result. I grab these files, I drag them into my needs review, and guess what happens? It removes them from the old folders and relocates them to these folders. And a lot of people aren't used to doing, used, you know, used to thinking that way out of a search result. And unless they immediately go up here and click the undo button, and if, unless they do that, they'll never even know which folders they just rearranged, so they don't even know how to fix the problem. And then it's a giant mess to figure out what happened. So that problem would have been completely avoided had I never been given edit access to those folders. If I'd simply been given view access to those folders, wouldn't have been a problem. And so that leads directly into what are my recommended practices regarding shared folders, and that's the next video in the playlist.